Let's create a control rig. Control rigs in Unreal are a powerful way to create and manipulate animations, so let's go from zero to control rig. This is an update to an older video, so if you saw the older video, it's a little bit simpler to do now. This is the updated version. We're going to create a control rig for Kate Marsh because that appears to be the tradition on this channel. To do that, we click on our skeleton, go up to create, and go down to control rig. If you don't see this, just go into your add-ons and turn on the control rig plugin. You already have it, you just have to turn it on. That will create a control rig, which looks something like this. We're going to be doing most of our work with this tab, the rig hierarchy. Yours might look more like this. So if you hold shift, you can just recursively open all of them. And the basic idea is that we want all of these bones to be controlled by controls. So we select all the bones. And we right click and we say, add controls for selected. This creates an entire identical hierarchy. The only difference is that these all have underscore CTRL after their names. Problem is, they don't automatically map. So they don't actually do anything. We have to make them do stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of these bones and have them look for the control named after them. Pretty easy. We just select all of the bones drag it over onto this area and hit a create item array. This will create a list of all of our bones. Then we can just do a for each. We are now going through every single bone. If you have a lot of bones, you might want to optimize this, or at the very least, you'll have to increase the number of nodes that your system can execute. Those are both fine. Uh, for example, you can cache these relationships and that sort of stuff. But just for now, we can simply go through it every frame. It's not that big a deal. Now we have the element. What we need is the control with the same name. So we're going to grab these controls, put them over here, create the item array. This is a list of all of our controls. And what we're going to want to do is find a control. Make sure you use the array find, not the string find. There we go. And we're going to want this name to be the bones name underscore CTRL. And we're going to want to find the control with that name. Pretty basic, right? If we found a control with that name, we're going to want to change this bone to follow this control. So grab the bone, bring it on over here, and uh, set transform, like so. And down here, we need to have the control, but we don't actually have a direct control pull. We don't have the, the exact element pull here, so we have to get it. We're just going to go down here, get at this index. There we go. And then we're going to get the transform. And of course, punch it straight up into the bone. There we go. So now you can see that we're set up. We can now modify any of these controls, and they will change exactly uh, what the character is doing. <laughs> So we're going to hit compile, and that'll reset all of this stuff. But as you can see, it's a little bit difficult to tell what's going on. So what we're going to want to do is clean up the visuals quite a bit. There's a lot of ways to do that. The fundamental thing I generally do is change these all from balls immediately. So just select all of them, and we're going to switch them all over into thick circles. This at least will make it so that they're not quite so obvious. Uh, the circles are almost always going to be 90 degrees rotated off of the direction you want. See these spinal circles? So we'll just rotate them. There we go. However, some of these are still really big and confusing. So we're going to go up to the face, for example, and we're going to take all of these, and we're going to scale them way down. There we go. That could bring them inside of the face. As you can see, some of them are sunken inside. If we really wanted to, we could manipulate how much they're offset and that sort of stuff. But we're not going to you know, do a lot of work on that here today. We also have the similar problem with the hands. All of the fingers and stuff are considerably larger than they should be. So we're just going to go through and grab all of them on both hands using Control and Shift. And uh, we're just going to bring them down to size as well. There we go. And this means that we can now actually see what's going on. We do have some, however, that are definitely inside of the character. We can't really get at them. And we're going to want to make sure that we manipulate this so that we can actually 
reach those bones. Most notably, the shoulder and the forearm bones, or sorry, the arm and the forearm bones for these. And we're going to want the head, neck, spine, 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 hips. We're just going to bring those up to maybe four. And obviously, you can keep modifying this uh, as you see fit to try and get it to look exactly like you want it to. So, you know, do as you please for visual's sake. If we hit compile and maybe save, we can come back over into Unreal and add that to the scene. Boom. This will automatically add in a sequencer. The sequencer is where you can do simple animations right here in Unreal. If you're trying to modify existing animations, that's another topic. Similarly, if you're trying to do a sequencer that will go into a character controller, you're going to have to bake it. So that's also another topic, but this is where it all starts right here. If we were to add in the uh, control rig, we can come over here and we can just grab some of these elements. And if you've got this automatic keying turned on, it will automatically make the keys that you need so that you can just have some fun with it. There we go. So we can then go back out into the scene just by closing this down. We can select that and tell it to just play that constantly forever. Now when we hit play, ooh, an animation really complicated. I'm sure you'll agree that this is the start of something wonderful. This might be enough for you, but I think most people would like to do some IK, some inverse kinematics. I'm going to show you one way to do that. There are a lot of ways to do that, but once you understand how it works in a general sense, you're going to have an easier time. So go back over here and create some IK. For our IK, we don't need any of these, so we're going to shrink them down and create some new references. The first new reference we're going to create is called IK hand, and then we're going to use the full word right. Now this may not be necessary for you, but one thing you'll notice is that this actually uses the word right rather than .l or .r. It spells out the word right. Same with left. We want to keep the same convention. So because it's all spelled out, we're going to keep spelling it out. This is where it is down there. We're going to want to bring that up to maybe well, you know, something like this, something that seems like it's where the right hand should go. And then we're going to right click and say set offset transform from current. That way when we recompile, it'll stay there instead of being on the ground. We can then duplicate that and paste it. And this one will move back because this is going to be her elbow. So once again, right click, set offset transform from current. And this is obviously going to be elbow right. There we go. Now, how do we do IK? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the controls for her arm, and we're going to move the controls around, and then the controls will move the bones around. But in order for that to do its job, we have to move the controls around before we move the bones around. So we're going to have a sequence. Make sure you fave your sequence. You're going to be using this a lot. The second thing we do is assign all of those bones to their transforms. The first thing we do is IK. Look at all these IK options. Just for the sake of this, we're only going to do basic IK. There we go. Basic IK still looks pretty complicated, but it's as basic as IK gets. We have a control for the arm. We're using the right arm at the moment. And we have a control for the forearm. Again, the right forearm. And of course, we have a control for the hand, the right hand. For the effector and all of that jazz, those are going to be things that are from our new controls. So give ourselves just a little bit of space here, and we're going to stick them in there. So here's our hand, and here's our elbow. If we look at the pole vector, this is the elbow. So we're going to change that to a location, and we'll use the translation of our elbow. And that'll make sure that we have the correct thing for our elbow. For the effector, we're just going to drop this transform straight in. And now you can see that it's sort of working, but her arm is doing something weird. You can see how it's just like really screwed up. 
This is because the axes are incorrect. I actually don't know the best way to determine what axes are best, but in this case I believe that we can just play around until we find something that looks right. Here you can see her shoulder still looks a little bit wrong, so it could be that the secondary axis is incorrect. You can manipulate these as much as you please until you can find a setup where the shoulder looks right and the elbow looks right and nothing is weird and twisted. This is good enough for our purposes. However, her hand is not in a very good location, so we're going to want to change this into just a, a default location that's a little bit less egregious, something like this. And then right click, set offset transform from current. We're also going to want to use a control that's not a ball, so once again we're going to want to bring in, say, a half circle this time. And we're going to want to make sure that the half circle is aligned with the rotation of the hand. So something like negative 90, 90? Oh, no, that's not it. You can also just manually rotate it. It's not that big a deal. It's doing all sorts of random stuff. So we're just going to rotate it until it is in the position that the hand was in. And then we'll just tell it to save that. Boom. Now when we hit compile. Oh, that didn't. Oh, we actually wanted to save the shape, not the, uh, <laughs> my bad. So there's two things at play here. There's the offset transform and the shape transform. Basically, the shape isn't oriented in the correct way. So we're trying to set the shape to be oriented in the correct way. There we go. And we can just bring this scale way up, something like 333. Three, three. That'll give us a nice, easy-to-handle hand. Now if we go back over here into Unreal and we open up our level sequence, we can try and grab her hand. Now we just added this, so this level sequence doesn't have a key saved for it. Uh, we'll just go ahead and tell it to save that key. And then of course we can move this around in the same way that we move around any other bone. Now keep in mind that this completely overrides all of the other bones that it affects. So this arm bone here, we can't do anything with it because every single frame, it's subordinate to the IK. We would really like to have some freedom though. We would like to be able to turn the IK on and off and weight it, do whatever we would like, right? We don't want it to be stuck with this one thing. So let's create an IK enabler control. Not a big deal, just have to know how to do it. So we're going to create a new control. New control. IK hand enable right. Now you're going to want to move this at compile. You're going to want to move this over into some place that makes sense before you do anything else. So for example, this seems like a pretty good place for the right IK control to go. And set offset transform from current. Now the reason you want to do this now is because when we change this type over into a float, it's going to do weird stuff if we try and move it afterwards, just because it's a little bit buggy. This might not be true if you're coming from like 2025 or something, but in this particular version, it, it doesn't move around very well after the fact. Now we're going to want this to be the z-axis, like so, and we're going to want to change the shape into a solid arrow and point that arrow straight up. That's down. That's up. We'll make the default 100. These, by default, run from 0 to 100, so 100 would be max. As you can see, if we move this around, it just goes up and down, and that's going to be the strength of our IK. Would you look at that? We have an IK weight argument right there. So we're just going to move all of this stuff so it's not quite as overlappy. Just bring it all up. Take this hand enable IK, grab it, and uh, we'll just grab that float and divide it by the maximum. And that's going to be the weight of the IK. So now, if we were to once again create a new key, because um, this creates a key for everything, by the way. So, you know, it didn't exist until we, we just created it, so it's not in the animation until just now. But if we were to grab this and change it around so that it is 
more on or more off, you can see how her hand kind of snaps to the IK selector. So this means that we can easily go ahead and make her hand turn her IK on and off. It's pretty straightforward. You can also use a Boolean for this. The Booleans don't show up. Um, for reasons unknown to me, they can't be visualized very easily, so I prefer a float. Keep in mind that even a small value will make her hand slowly go down, see? So it's, it's not that it's going to be halfway between whatever you were trying to get and the final result. It's going to be moving towards the final result at a specific speed. So that is the basic setup. But of course, you want IK for both arms, don't you? Don't worry, that is quite trivial. All we need to do is grab them and hit mirror. We're going to want to mirror them and switch right into left. Boom, there we go. And uh, that works pretty well. The other thing we need to do, however, is the same thing here. So we're just gonna grab these, right click, uh, search and replace and mirror. I think, however, that we have to copy this first we don't want to do it there, we want to do it in a new set, so here. And then once again, search and replace, mirror, search, right, replace, left. Do this after you create the controls, of course. And then hook it up. And there you go, we now have a perfect mirror, and now we have IK for both arms. The, uh, the axes are wrong, however, so you would want to go back in and fix those axes again. And that'll depend on your skeleton. Different skeletons have different setups for mirroring. Still, as you can see, this isn't too hard. It's not too bad. Feel free to uh, explore more advanced options now that you know the basics of what's going on. Keep in mind that this has an entire second set of solutions for backwards solving, for modifying animations on the fly, that sort of stuff. I'm not covering that here, but the same core idea of setting up controls is central to both approaches. Have fun.